Okay, so I'm going to attempt to show how I put a puppy in Continental for the first time. This is Trip. He is 11 months old, but he's had his final puppy show, so we're going to go ahead and put him in Continental. And I cannot fit him all the way in the screen and show you guys anything in detail, so I'll just to back up when I'm finished. The first thing I do is locate where the tail and the body meet. That's about this line right here. So, I'm going to come back from that position backwards because that is how I'm going to start setting the rosettes and I set everything based on where the rosettes start. It's important to note his rosettes are not going to look right going directly from puppy coat into continental because this has just been scissored for a show. That's all going to be, that's all going to be fairly short and it's going to have an odd angle to it. Now, I know that I don't want to come past here from shaving his legs, so I might as well just go ahead and strip all this off pretty quickly to get it out of the way. Now, I already harvested the long hair from across the front of his leg here, so that I've got little wigs for the next time I have a puppy to show. The rear rosette or rear bracelet I like to sit about two fingers width above the hock. Now that might be a little bit high but it's where I start because it's easier to move it down than it is to grow it back up again. I also know from experience, put that down, baby, that I like to have the base of my rosette roughly in line with, if you put your hand up here on their belly and into that pocket, your finger points out at a spot. And it's sitting about right here. Here's their flank, where his flank ends in his body. And I know I like for the jacket to be roughly in line with where the flank and body hit. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out from the spot where my finger pokes through and the flank backwards. That has a super, super rough start to where his rosette is going to be. Now, I know that I want the rosette to be circular. I'm going to grab my little short curves, match it up with the line of his tail, and I'm just going to literally come down and connect those two lines by trimming out what's here. Now I know I want to take that off in order to have that round shape. I'm just going to come back with my clippers, and I'm intentionally going against the growth of his hair because I don't want to take him really tight with a 40 blade and possibly have him have a skin reaction. physically intentionally hold around that line so that my hand will come down and so that my clippers will hit my hand without cutting out the hair that goes past that line. Now we have the start of one little 
bracelet, you have the start of a rosette. I want to take a better look at that and yeah, it's still a little, little high from where my finger pokes through on the base. I'm going to clean that up a little bit more so I can see it better. My scissors need sharpened. Keeping my finger there, I'm going to actually make sure my blades hit against my finger. And yeah, I feel it on the inside of his body. So there we go. That's the, the tuck up I want to get started on, on the uh, at bottom edge of the rosette. I'm going to clean this out. So I know that this flank ends about right here. I can stop and look at the rosette and see that, yep, yeah, that's about where it needs to go. Even though it's going to need to grow up from that point. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that out. Then since I want the jacket line straight, I'm going to grab my straights and actually put them directly in line with this flank and trim upwards. That's going to give me a visual spot to follow. It's very hard to make that straight line with clippers the first time. So now I've got that straight edge that I know I want to follow. I come back in with my clippers and clean that up. Now, that is not the most beautiful rosette or the most beautiful jacket line, but it's a start. And continue to use my straights and come up around his back. I've got these squared off edges. I'm going to grab our comb and brush into all those squared areas. Take your curves and scissor off whatever falls past that line. Brush the jacket back. Do the same thing there. Just cut off whatever falls past that line. You want to take your curves and clean that up just a little bit more. You can actually do it by just Allowing your tips to come in and just cut off the angle of the scraggly hair that's sticking out. I'm going to clean up the angles on this a little bit. Frankly, I think it needs to be a little bit higher up his leg than that poke through. Just looking at it, I can tell it's not high enough. Here between his rosettes, I'm going to use the shears, the straights, lay it in line with his tailbone and just trim out a little channel between the two rosettes. I'm going to clean that up with my clippers and it is never 100% straight, it just isn't. And that's fine. The judge will never look over top of your dog and try to see the rosettes anyway. When they go down, do the down and back, the tail is up over their back and you can't see the little strip in between anyway. So don't make yourself sick trying to make those that little stripe between the rosettes even because it literally does not matter. Oops, I missed a spot. Oh, look at that 
catch up on that baby boy. So, because he had the puppy clip and there's an uphill run on the uh, puppy slope, it's going to make his rosette start to have that uphill run, and you don't want that. So, you want to come in and clean that up. Now, you want to make sure you don't lift or drop. You actually want to follow the rosette, pay attention to its height, and make sure you're keeping the front height and the back height of the rosette even. It's harder to do than it seems. Because that will make the top line look off. I actually have another video on YouTube where I'm setting the rosettes on an older girl who has more hair so it's easier to tell exactly what I'm doing. I actually like to brush it straight up to see if it's still running uphill or not, and get down level with it, and it is. I'm going to come down here and make sure I level off this front. So it's level with the back. Whoops. Whoops, everybody. Sorry. This is not going to be a beautiful rosette. But you can see that the shape is getting started. this out of the way make sure you don't cut it get that area cleaned up because I hear it's just scraggly right there and this angle is still gonna be pretty steep because he just showed in puppy clip last weekend now you want to do the front leg you want the height good boy of the rear of the front bracelet in line with the highest length of the rear bracelet the front of the front bracelet equal to the highest height of the rear bracelet. Now, the thing is we will trim some of this hair so we don't want to necessarily leave it as high as I'm going to start it but I like to start it really high because again it's easier to drop it down lower than it is to grow it up higher. So we're going to fluff that up to its full height just right here right now. Come forward and that's about right there. I'm going to wrap my fingers around him and I know that I want the jacket up here like a natural little divot in their leg. I want the, to start the jacket about at that natural little divot even though I may grow it out longer a little bit. It's a good spot to start for me to see it and when they're going through coat change as they inevitably are when you put them in pattern you're gonna have a lot of matting right here in the armpit. That just saves you from that matting for a while. So I just wrap my fingers around, get started where the leg meets the body and just come down to my own hand. I'm just getting this out of the way. And I'll be honest, he showed last weekend. I haven't washed or dried him since because I knew I was throwing him in pattern as soon as I had a minute. So, yeah, he's a little rough right now. And the battery's a little low, so it's struggling. But there you go. That's the start. go. So that's the start on one side of rosettes and bracelets and the jacket on the proper location. Get the neck hair fluffed up here. You stand right, you turd. Oh, I missed a spot. You are a big bone boy. So, this camera will not stay at the right height. Hey, buddy, mommy's gonna scoot the table over. Okay? Very good boy. So, that's the start. I'm gonna stop the video here and start it again to show cleaning up the pattern. Get it more correct. Just fluff up your neck hair. It's not going to look right if you don't have the neck hair all fluffed. But you 
can see how his basic shapes coming together. If you found that helpful, please click the like and subscribe buttons. All right, so I already did side one, as you can see. I decided to go ahead and come back and show side two just in case there was something needed clarifying or if I hadn't been loud enough in the, the original. So once again, we're going to start off, we're going to set its rosettes. I set the rosettes based on where the tail is set. I want it in line with the front edge of the tailbone, which for him was right here. So I'm just going to clean out everything that falls back past that. Then I start the rear bracelets two fingers width above their hocks because it's easier to bring them down if I need to bring them down than it is to go back up. I'm actually going to hold my finger around that. For some reason my video stopped. So I want to clean up the rosette by coming back to my shears and cleaning around it. You know what though? I'm going to stop to make sure I've got enough memory and just show you the final cleanups. So in our other video we very quickly threw Trip into pattern. He's in my 11 month old Cafe Olay boy who isn't going to be showing again for probably about a year. I've got other responsibilities so got him in a little bit early. Stop. Good boy. So we set his rosette in line with the front edge of his tail. Set his jacket a finger's width in front of his rosette and in line with where his flank joins his body. Set his rose his bag bracelets two fingers width above his hocks. Use the front edge of this bone to set the, the front level of his jacket and set his uh, front bracelets in line with the highest point of hair of his rear bracelet. So they're kind of high right now. now. I'm going to show you sort of the, um, the things people tend to miss whenever they're first putting a dog into Continental. we got this big chunk of hair here, which was part of his side, it's part of his side coat. It needs to be scissored off. So right now it's kind of sticking out in all kinds of ways. So, I you need to stop looking at me for four seconds. It's difficult with this boy. Stop it. Stop it. I'm going to take the curves. Now I want to angle it up in the front. Turn that. No. Angle it higher in the front and lower in the back. And just cut off everything that falls past that shave line, including underneath him. And underneath him, I just want to brush all this down. Use our straights coming up underneath him in the front and just cut that off. We just want all that even with his elbows at this point. Unlike the puppy clipper, we want that sharp, sharp angle. Continental, we want it to come out pretty much straight and then arch up this way and arch up across the front. Stop looking at me. Thank you. I'm going to cut off everything that falls past that leg shave line. Now it's not going to be completely the right shape yet because he's still going to have leftovers of puppy clip because he was just shown. But this is the problem is that a lot of people that are just putting a dog in the Continental, they'll stop here and it's not ready to stop yet. You still have tweaking that needs to be done. One. This jacket should not be level across here. It should come up slightly higher in the front. So you want to brush some of that down. 
check your shave line here and just ever so slightly raise it up in the front just that simple little touch means that now your jacket isn't pointing straight down so you got to come back and scissor off what falls past the shave line Probably be easier if my scissors weren't so dull. Let me dab them sharpen again. But I think you can see now how now it has a rise across the front because it's coming down from back here and up. And that could actually, a hair of that could come off just a little bit more. If you could stop leaning against mama, it would be super freaking helpful. Thank you. Turd. You big guy, pretty sure you can hold yourself up. Pretty sure you don't need me to do it for you. Turn me down, buddy. There we go. So now that has that nice rise coming up the front, which I think he's angled slightly away from the camera, so it's kind of hard to see. Quit fighting me, butthead. There we go. There we go. So now it's got that rise coming up off the front. And then where it needs cleaned up between these front legs. There we go. Well, honey, if you wouldn't shove so hard against mama, I wouldn't be shoving so hard back. The other thing we need to do is fix up these back bracelets. We got all this hair, this just long hair hanging out everywhere. Doesn't need all that. We want these to look pretty much round. So fluff all this up. Now it's puppy hair. So that means it's going to fall a lot on its own. It's not crisp enough to really hold shape. So you don't want to scissor all the top of this really, really tight. You want to just tip all the points around the edges so that when it does fall, it still leaves a nice height to the top. We just want to make this round. To be honest, I did not fluff him out especially well. Not bathed, all that good stuff. But that starts to give him some shape. And then we can see from there that our front bracelets are definitely too high. And these are not going to look right just fresh coming out of a puppy clip because the hair in the back is longer than the hair in the front. But I knew when I sat on that I left them too high. So I would always err on the side of leaving them too high. But now I know, okay, this is the actual little top height of my back rope bracelets. So this is actually where they need to be, about a finger's or two width below where they are right now. So I'm going to come back around, bring them down just a little. That's much more like it. Now fluff that up. And quite a bit of what's on this back side is going to come off. So a lot of that is just excess hair for now. So I'm going to trim that off. But it's the same as with the back. You don't want to take that super tight because this is puppy hair that's going to fall. You know it's going to fall. So it has zero texture. Yes, it should have texture as they grow. 
It might not. Anytime you've got a dog with softer texture, you don't want to take the top of the bracelet super tight because then you're just going to have a big droopy bracelet. And so that's largely the basics of what we're going for here. Let's get this neck hair all fluked up for you. See what he looks like with at least the one side tweak. backwards, get up, and that's the outline you're going for.